Hey there students and welcome to another video here with Accounting University. In today's video I'm going over how to create a cash flow statement from scratch. Let's get into it. Okay, so cash flow statements, the last statement here in this financial statement series. If you haven't seen the other ones, please watch it. I'll go ahead and put a video right up here. Actually, I'll move my link over so you'll see the video up here. And um, there's going to be an income statement and a balance sheet. So go ahead and make sure you watch those first before we get into the cash flow statement. All right, so the cash flow statement we're going to do here is what we call the indirect method. Now, the indirect method takes your net income and it's going to make a lot of adjustments to those net income to get to what we call cash flows provided by operating activities. On the cash flow statement, there's three sections, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Operating activities, think about it as day-to-day -day activities of your operations. Investing is investing if you buy a fixed asset, sell a fixed asset, maybe you lend out money to someone else. And then financing is what you finance your business with. Could be a stock, it could be taking on a loan, it could be paying out a dividend. So there's lots of different examples of each, but in this uh, video, we're just gonna go over a few of them just so you can get an uh, understanding of how the cash flow statement works. Now the cash flow statement, it's kind of what it sounds like, cash flow. It only focuses on the cash going into the business and the cash going out of the business. That's the important part. So what we do here is we're gonna start with the operating income section. And there's gonna be some rules along the way and just make sure you're taking notes and I'll show you what they are. So first we're gonna start with net income and we're gonna go ahead and plug in here what our net income is and that just comes from our income statement. So I'll do equals and go over to our income statement and plug in our net income. Once again, these numbers come from the income statement video. Make sure you watch that. All right, and so now we're going to do some adjustments to reconcile net income to what we call cash flow from operating activities. Now here's some rules. I'm actually going to write them out for you right over here. So we're going to be looking at our current assets and our current liabilities. And we're going to look for changes from year to year with those. So if you notice there's an increase in current assets, what that's going to equal is a decrease to net income. You do the opposite. Now, if it's a decrease in current assets, same stuff. We do the opposite. You increase net income. Now, next, current liabilities. It's the same. So if your liabilities go up, your current liabilities, you will increase net income. But if liabilities go down, you guessed it, it's going to decrease net income. So those are some big rules there. Now along with that, there's a few other ones, such as depreciation expense. If your depreciation expense, you always add that in this section. If you have a gain, you're going to subtract it. If you have a loss, you're going to add it. Those are some other rules. I'll put them right here as well. Depreciation expense, you add to net income. If it's a gain, you subtract net income. If it's a loss, you add. Those are most of the rules there for operating activities. So let's go and jump in here. We're going to look at two balance sheets to see the change. That's the most important part. So the balance sheet here, we did this on the left side, we did this balance sheet in the other video, make sure you watch that. And I created a prior year balance sheet so we can look at a comparison. With cash, we don't worry about that, we'll worry about that toward the end of the cash flow statement. However, we have accounts receivable here. If you notice, look, on the prior year it was 2,000 and in the current year it's 3,000. So it increased, right? Increased by $1,000 from 2,000 to 3,000. So we'll go back over here and we'll say increase in accounts receivable. And since it increased, if you look at the rules, you decrease net income. So we do decrease of $1,000. 
Now next, prepaid insurance. It went from $4,000 in the prior year down to $2,500. So we're gonna go ahead and put that rule in here. We're gonna say decrease in prepaid insurance. So it went, it went down, right? And if you look, decrease in current assets, you increase net income. So we increase it by the difference, which is gonna be, once again, 4,000 to 2,500, that's $1,500. So we increase it by 1,500. Now next here, we have inventory. Inventory went from 1,200 to 3,450. That's an increase. By how much? If we do the math, 3,450 minus 1,200, you get $2,250. And it increased. So increase in prepaid insurance. Oh, sorry, no, increase in inventory. And that was $2,250. But since it was an increase, if you look at the rules, you decrease that income. Hopefully that's making sense so far. Those rules are going to be your best friend with calculating this. So $2,250 for inventory. Now we look at other special rules. Was there a depreciation expense? There was. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring over our depreciation here. So if you look at on our income statement, depreciation expense is set to negative 530. So you're going to add that number. It's according to the rules, add to net income. So we go ahead and add depreciation expense of $530. There's also, you sold land at a gain for 1200. So that gain on land sale is actually a negative number. According to the rules, you subtract it from net income. So negative 1200. And there you go. Now, moving down here, I'll go ahead and make all these numbers the same size. There we go. So I think that's everything for operating activity. We have our accounts receivable, prepaid insurance, increase in inventory. Ah, and I did forget a few things here. We also need to look at our current liabilities. If you see here, we have accounts payable, wages payable, income taxes payable. So we got to look at the differences here and see what happened. So let's go and start with accounts payable. Went from 3420 to 2830. So if you get the difference there, 3420 minus 2830, you get $590. And so it went down. So we say decrease in accounts payable. And since that's a current liability, if you look over at the rules, decrease in current liabilities is also a decrease to net income. So we do negative 590 there. Wages payable, 6550 went to 8860. It actually increased. So 8860 minus 6550, and we get 2310. Increase in wages payable, 2310. Lastly, we have uh, income taxes payable went from 2200 to 799. So let's go ahead and do the difference there. 2200 minus 799. And you get 1401. So it's going to be a decrease in income taxes payable for 1401. And it's actually a negative number because remember the rule decrease in current liabilities, decrease net income. And that should be all of it there. We have our liabilities, we have our gain, our depreciation, and our assets, current assets. So what we do now is we just sum all these up. So you do sum all these numbers, including net income. And there you go, 5090. So let's go ahead and uh, make all these numbers the same size. There we go. Now next we have the investing section where again, it's just when you are investing, you're either buying equipment, buying land, selling land, selling equipment. Maybe you're lending money out to someone else through like a notes receivable, that's investing. And honestly, we don't have much. All we did is we bought equipment for 2,500. If we bought equipment, that means that equipment purchased for negative 2,500 and we just move this number down. And now I'm gonna show you some uh, a rule here. 
So when you have a negative number for a section, right, this is positive. And so when you have a positive number, it's called provided by. When it's negative, we're actually going to change this to cash flows used by investing. If it's used by, it means it's a negative number. If it's provided by, it's a positive number. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to make this the same size as well. There we go. Same with this one here so it's easier to read. Now lastly, we have financing activities. And there's only one I included in this example. We issued stock for $540. So let's go ahead and then plug that in here. So issued stock, so issued stock. And if you issued it, that means you got cash because you gave out stock. So we issued it for 540. So let's just go ahead and plug in $540. And this is actually provided by financing. I'll update that. There we go. Equals $540. Make these bigger numbers. And that is it. So now the next step is we get the increase or decrease we had in cash. Now the way we do that, you take all of your, uh, your sum of each activity. So we have 5090 negative 2500 and $540. So let's sum these up. So we're going to do sum. We'll do 5090, negative 2500 and $540. And we get 3130. Now I'll make this number the right side. So now let's look at our beginning cash balance. So what is our beginning cash balance? Well, it's what we started the current year with. Most students will choose the number they see on the left. That's our current balance sheet. But it's really what we ended the prior year with. Whatever we ended the prior year with is what we start the current year with. And that's right here. Cash. 6870 would be our beginning cash balance. So let's do that. Let's just bring that over. Do equals. Bring over this number here. And there we are. And now to get our ending cash balance, we just sum these up. And that's it. And the, and the way you know you did it correctly is if you're, oh, let me make sure I format this here. The way you know you did, to correct, did it correctly is if your ending cash balance is equal, is equal to that number, $10,000. So let's take a look. There we are, $10,000. And that is correct. So that's that way we knew we did it correctly. And that is a cash flow statement. That's a long one. So make sure you rewind the video to really understand how that works, looking for comparisons with the balance sheet, the special rules with depreciation, gains, losses, and going through here with the financing and investing sections all the way to the end to make sure your ending cash balance equals out. Hopefully that was helpful. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.